I ask you now, Aspirin. Are you prepared to leap into the abyss in pursuit of powered unrivaled? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Sold my soul to Black Mage and Roll. <laughs> Come And hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. I am your host, Nicodemus Kane, and we are back in the world of Eorzea. Uh, we just got done with the main quest. We can't really pick this one because we gotta be level 4 to get there, so... We're gonna go do some side quests. So let's go. Let's do it. Let's have some fun doing some side quests. Uh... I think we should... yeah. I'm sitting there thinking, and it is hatching tide, which means it's the, uh, it's the Easter celebration that, uh, Final Fantasy goes through. I haven't done a hatching tide in, uh, several years. Uh, the last one I remember doing, uh, you had to partner up with somebody, and you had to, uh, take eggs. You had to go find an egg, and then you had to take, you both had to take an egg back to somebody else and do something. I don't know, see, here's some eggs over here. I always love the little seasonal celebrations. They're always really, really cool. Uh, but one thing I wanted to do, and I'm not going to pull them out just yet. Um, of course, the Delivery Moogle. Uh, uh, he basically delivers mail to you. Uh, and because I started out uh, as a beta member, plus the pre-orders and all the other stuff, and all the veteran rewards that I've gotten over the years, I've got a lot of stuff in here. And actually, I'm not, uh, I don't want to read all this. I have 18 letters. Uh, Moogle Delivery Service. Uh, yeah. Moogle Delivery Service. I know all this stuff. We don't need to worry about this. But, of course, you see, I've got tons and tons of stuff. If anybody ever wonders uh, why I, on my top right corner... Oh, and I did change the HUD, too. I wanted to mention that as well. But in the top right corner it says I have 18 messages. It's because it's all this shit. And I can pull all this out, but I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to right now. We're going to leave it all in there. I'm not going to worry about it. But I did change the HUD around a lot. Uh, <laughs> this is something new for me. I'm trying something a little different. Uh, just to kind of push some things around, do some things. I know that I got the chat bar over top of one of the other crossbars. We'll get to that eventually. Uh, because what I'm going to do... Uh, those two crossbars that are on the end, uh, whenever you hold, I don't have it. I don't have it set. I got. I got a lot more to do. I've still got a lot left to do to, uh, you know, make this my own. <laughs> but uh, when you get to the point to where, hey, you have to kill. What do you? What do you guys say? Curious collector. Good evening, friend. Why don't you be interested in learning about the hatching tide festivities? A fledgling festival, Hatching Tide was born of a prophetic dream visited upon a Gridanian maiden named Jilly Aliapo. God, I'm going to love pronouncing these names in this game. Holy shit. In her dream, the twelve Archons of old appeared. Those heroes have saved the realm from the destruction of the sixth Umbral Calamity. Uh, descending from the heavens atop beautifully decorated eggs, they said to Jilly... Arise, young dreamer, and make ready the vessels for our return. And so she did, painstakingly painting and gliding eggs to match those from her vision. Word of the prophecy spread, and Jilly attracted helpers to assist in her toils. After the calamity, the festival grew further as townsfolk and adventurers flocked to celebrate the Archons of all of your who many believe have some hand had some hand in delivering the realm. You know what I mean. Jesus, now that you've learned about Hatching Tide, perhaps you would like to participate in it. Since you are so inclined, we invite you to Gridania, where the festivities are being held. We look forward to seeing you there. Of course, Gridania, for me being level one Thaumaturge nobody, is like a million miles away right now. So we are probably not going to be able to participate in uh, Hatching Tide. We might. I don't know. I might see what I can do with it. Uh, it depends. Like I said, uh... Look at all the eggs up here. Holy shit. Boy, they really have changed a lot. But, uh... 
I know it is possible uh, to run. Uh, if you can be careful as hell, I have ran from here to Gradania on like a level 10, I think. It's it gets a little rough because by the time you get in there, you're you're talking like level 30, you know, level 40 enemies that are like in between the zones. And those are kind of a pain in the ass. So I I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. So Wyman's got a side quest. Let's start doing some side quests. Uh, dual diligence. Wyman would like to know what you think of Ulda. So how are you taking to Ulda, Nicodemus? Make any new friends in high places yet? Ha. Well, when you have the Sultana's ear one day, which we will, I hope you won't have forgotten about old Wyman. As uh, long as you're here, mayhap you can do me a favor and take this missive to Josias at the Platinum Mirage. Okay, it's just over yonder, and the man will even give you some gill for your trouble. If only all work in the city was this easy. Yeah, yeah no kidding, right? So we have to go this way. But I will be changing up the HUD as we go. I will be changing... There's a lot of, like, little subtle things uh, inside of, like, the... Like, little things with the camera, little things about, uh, you know, whenever I select certain people, you know, what buttons I press that do what. I just have to go back over to my main character and pull all of those over to this character uh, so that I can get it to... Because there's, you know, there's a certain way you can do it, like I said, with a controller that if you set it up right, it'll work perfectly. Uh, but as far as where everything is right now, it's going to move. I just haven't done it yet. I know my status effects are going to be in the way of my health bar and all this stuff. Because just the way it's set up, it's going to take me a while. I will get there. Eventually, I'll get there. Uh, let's accept this one, too. I'm, I'm just going to accept them all, and then we'll just go as we go. Jajakuta. Uh, Judge Akuda, the merchant, is visibly perturbed and in need of some assistance. Tell me, what brings you here, friend? Huh? Looking for a bit of work, perhaps? Some small job to add a little weight to that coin purse of yours, huh? Well, you're in luck. The pugilists have just placed an order with me for several of the leather gloves and harnesses they use for sparring. But the traders are cruel, for I find myself lacking the hides required. Would that I had the pelts for a few snapping shrews. What say you, friend? Huh? Care to help a merchant down on his luck, huh? Bring me five snapping shrew pelts, and I promise to make it worth your while. You can find a creature roaming Central Thanalan. Of course, like I said, we are probably going to hit level five before we even leave the city. I don't know. We might. I, I We might have to go out early. I know uh, whenever I tried to do this one time, I think I got up to a level four. Then I had to leave the city anyways. Did I miss that one guy? Who are you? Oh, yeah. He's back here. Gelther. Gelther does not like the way you were looking at him, but we'll let it pass if you deliver a message for him. Hey, you. I saw you looking at me. You got something to say, fool? Huh? No? Well, I do. You know Diddy Lala? That's, that's one of those names. Diddy Lala. Lata. Diddy Lata. Oh, Jesus. Short broke. Never pays what he owes. Yeah, that bleeding horse, son. Tell him to pay up, or I swear by the 12. I'll beat him so hard, it'll feel like second coming to Dalamoot. If you see that little shite's face, little shite, nice, <laughs> I'll end up pounding him into a bloody pulp like it's not. So you go and tell him. Pity the fool. It's Mr. T. Uh, I, more than likely, there will be a lot of guys uh, that I will be doing Mr. T voice for, because some of these guys, I swear. Josias, uh, do you have business with, the, business with the Platinum Mirage this evening? Uh, yes, I gotta give you this sealed envelope. I miss it from Wyman. All right, then let's have a look. Bird is barren. <laughs> Let the hounds feast. Uh, so it goes. Oh, this? Well, you see, the guild is often contracted to provide protective services. Unfortunately for this particular petitioner, Wyman's investigation has revealed his finances to be wanting. Maybe adventurers like you don't mind working for free, but we have a business to run. I myself have four mouths to feed, so this bird will have to fend for himself, I'm afraid. There you go! I just finished a side quest! Woohoo! I know, right? It's good stuff. Alright, so there's nothing else in here. Is there nothing else in here? No, there's nothing else in here. Okay. But it's, it's going to take a lot of work to slowly configure everything back to where I want it to over, over on this one. Uh, which, I like I've said, I've done this before. Uh, I had a couple other 
uh, side characters that I was just leveling just for fun. Because it does, when you get up to level 50, and all you're doing is waiting for instances to pop, or grinding out uh, beast quests, or just the grind of, of the upper levels, you get bored. I got bored really quick. I don't like the daily grinds, the constant over and over and over bullshit, especially whenever you're waiting for instances to pop, because I'm not the best tank, and I'm not the best healer. I, I really am not. And uh, DPS in this game just... Which, you know, DPS... Let me explain this a little bit for you don't know. DPS would be anything that's considered a damage dealer. Uh, Black Mage, Bard, uh, Dragoon, I'm, the others are going for my head. I should look. I don't know if it'll actually say... Oh, it won't say. Classes. Uh, yeah. Disciples of War, which would all be uh, damage dealers. No, no, they wouldn't all be damage dealers. What the fuck me? I'm an idiot. Never mind. Screw me. Holy smokes. Uh... Pugilist would be a monk, eventually, which is a damage dealer. A uh, marauder is a tank. Uh, Lancer, Lancer, Archer, Rogue, which will eventually be a uh, bard. Dragoon, Bard, and Ninja. Those are damage dealers. And then a Conjurer, con Conjurer can turn into a Summoner, which is kind of an in-between, but it's more of a healer. Uh, Arcanus turned into a... No, Conjurer is a White Mage. Fuck, I don't know. Anyways, uh, just know that as a black mage, you don't really get to, uh, you don't really get into too many parties because people just really don't like <laughs> damage dealers. They want tanks and healers. That's what it, what it is. And I think that, uh, I think that if there were a slightly easier healer class, because I know I've heard that paladin is like tanker easy mode, and I, I I might do tank easy mode eventually. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, oh, g g gods be good. Gelther's g, -g goon I don't want to do these. All right, all right. <laughs> I don't want to do all these uh, stutters. All right, all right. I'll give you back every gill I own. I swear it. But no more beatings. I beg you. Yay. Using items. Some items can be used. Granny various effects. Yeah. Of course, uh, the only times I ever really use items is whenever I'm, like, really, really desperate solo. Uh, I, I don't really use potions that much or, like, anything else. Like, every other Final Fantasy game, you're so used to, oh, you got a potion? Use that bitch, because you need it. But in this game, not so much. More, mostly you use, uh, like, foods. Foods help status effects. Uh, Diddy Lala... Diddy Lata needs help to repay a long overdue debt. Look, I haven't got the guild on hand, but I do have this ring. Ain't much to look at, but it'll surely fetch a high price. Was my dear departed mum's wedding ring. God's rest her soul. But she'll understand. Yeah, I'm sure she will. Uh, show it to Mamani, Mamani over at the ossuary, and you'll get your coin. Alright, so I'm looking up at the mini-map, which is a lot smaller than it used to be. I'm just saying. Uh, we have to go this way. Now, did I already... I think I might have attuned to this one. No, I did not. Okay. And remember, every Ethernet we see, we have to, uh... We have to attune to it. Which I may have already missed one, I don't know. Man, they did put a lot of eggs out, didn't they? I wonder what the black mages think of all these damn eggs everywhere. Jesus. Alright, let's go... Let's go finish this one up first. Mamane. Greetings, adventurer. What brings you to the Arzneth Ossuary? This gaudy ring. <laughs> you wish to sell this heirloom on behalf of Didilata? Very well. It is most unfortunate when such drastic measures must be taken. And doubly so when the item in question is a fake. and such a gaudy, poorly wrought one. Also, you do know that our appraisals are not free. Normally, this fee is subtracted from the agreed value. Alas, conser considering this negligible... Considering the negligible value of this ring, I'm afraid you will still owe us... However, since this is a rather unusual circumstance, we shall waive the fee this once. No need to concern yourself with the bauble. I will personally see to its disposal. Alright. Uh, what do we take? Potion or an ether? Potion or ether? Potion? Ether? Potion? 
Let's take a potion for now. Uh, no, wait, I already got some potions, don't I? Let's take an ether. I got a level! Da -da -da. There you go, level two. I just learned fire. Can you believe that? Level two and I finally earned a fire. Umbral Ice and Astral Fire. So this is a very long explanation of Umbral Ice and Astral Fire. Basically what it means is this is how we continuously deal damage, pretty much. Uh, when you are in fire, what is it? Every fire, increase, it increases the potency and MP cost of every fire after that. Which basically means when you put one fire down, you keep casting fire, they increasingly get heavier and heavier and heavier uh so by the by the time you know once it once it keeps stacking it's like the the very last fire that you cast will basically be like a bomb i mean it's it's really really cool uh at the same time it lowers potency and mp cost of blizzard spells of course blizzard <laughs> conversely casting a blizzard spell gives the amateurs their thaumaturs the, the effect of umbral ice which increases the speed at which the MP naturally recovers at the same time it lowers potency and MP of fire costs as the thaumatur progresses level the number of umbral ice and astral fire effects can be stacked basically what this means is fire is our main weapon uh, as you cast more and more fire it builds and it keeps building, keeps building until you're basically like hitting it monstrous levels of fire. But once you're getting up there, your MP starts dropping considerably. So when your MP drops, then you cast Blizzard. What Blizzard does is it makes your MP regain faster or go, you know, um, what's the word? It makes your MP go back up pretty much. So what you're doing is you're casting fire, 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 fire. When you run at MP, you cast Blizzard. And then your MP goes back up. And then you cast fire again, and you stack the fire back up. And then whenever you run at MP, you cast Blizzard. MP goes back up, you cast fire. It's 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 kind of like saying fire is the spark plug with an engine. The engine burns out all the gas. You know, the spark plugs and the engine burns out all the gas. Blizzard is like refueling. You hit Blizzard, you refuel, you press fire to go... Your, your tank gets empty, you press blizzard to refuel. Uh, you'll you'll learn as we go. And that's for anybody that's never played this game. For anybody that has played this game, you know what the hell's going on here. Okay, so Erasmus. Erasmus of the Thaumaturgs Guild is preoccupied with studies, but his brow is furrowed in a way that cries out for help. I am Erasmus of the Order of Nald Thal, and I am charged with studying the anatomy of the region's fauna and the environs in which they dwell. For the dark art of our order is death itself, <laughs> and power over death can come only through knowledge of life. One day I shall publish my findings in a single, comprehensive volume, The Many Breaths of Thanalan. But there is much work to be done before that day. Aid me, brother. Bring me five bottles of marmot blood. Perhaps I shall name you in a footnote. Marmots have, are handy creatures that thrive nigh everywhere. You will most certainly find them just outside the city of Western Thanalan, by way of the Gate of the Sultana. But do take care. They can be feisty little cre critters when threatened. All right, so that's another one of those little fetch quest kind of things. Uh, Yayake. Well, adventure, will you join our guild, or do you presume to ignore the urgings of impatient destiny? Uh, Yayake wishes to reaffirm your desire to join the Thaumaturs' Guild. Uh, we accept. A wise decision indeed. To prepare for your initiation, I would have you study the volumes of fundamental th th thaumaturgical principle. All 108 of them. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Or at least I would if such requirements had not been abolished, thank God. <laughs> Too great a deterrent to fresh novices, they said. I suppose you, would, you will, shall just have to settle for calling upon the collective wisdom of our guild masters. We have five, you see, all brothers of the same house. Though they all wield supreme authority, it is the eldest who provides a singular voice for the guild when one is required. Master Coco, Coco B, Coco Bigo, Coco Bago, Coco Bago, uh, I believe. I don't know. Coco Bago. So they are back here. So this is how we slowly become a black mage. Oh yeah, what's up? So this is Coco Bigo, Coco Bigo, Coco Bigo, Coco Bigo, Coco Bigo. 
Who? What? Oh, false teeth, man. Did your mother never tell you not to start on Thaumaturge? Yeah, because we're badass. Look at that expected face, Coco Baigo. This gentleman is obviously a new applicant for the guild, seeking audience with our eldest brother. Oh, prelate, prelate Yayake, she can recite the 307 verses of the funerary rites for the virtuous fallen by memory, but the simple task of keeping her name straight seems <laughs> seems ever beyond her grasp. Blah ha 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 ha. <laughs> Well, I, for one, find the constant confusion endlessly entertaining. My apologies, good sir. My merriment was not meant to mock your mistake. It is our sibling, Coco Buki, with whom you should speak. <laughs> speak of the devil. What's this? What's this? Great Thal has led to us a new aspirant. Aspirant? Ah, Coco Buki. Were you here the entire time? Greetings, child. I am Coco Buki, the eldest and I would venture to say the wisest of the five masters of the Thaumaturge Guild. It is my solemn duty to furnish our would-be initiates with a succinct understanding of our beloved art. Thus, I would have your fullest attention. To wield Thaumaturgy is to unleash devastation of the highest magnitude. Yes, it is. Hadouken! The lethal force of our spells far exceeds the destructive capability of any other form of arcane manipulation. Fire, lightning, blizzards, somnolence, somnolence, the hell is somnolence? Thaumaturge calls upon an expansive arsenal of offensive incantations to incapacitate and obliterate all manner of an adversaries. Now, I swear to shit, you go back and you read that line for yourself. Tell me that's not one of the hardest damn lines in the world. Holy smokes. Expansive arsenal of offensive incantations to incapacitate and obliterate all manner of adversaries. Whew! Wow! Open your mind to our sorcerer's teachings, and you too shall soon hold the unparalleled power of our discipline in the palm of your hand. Huh, huh, huh. Of course, such power has a price. You must be willing to plunge headfirst into the forbidding chasm of Thaumaturgy's secrets. For advancement in this art comes only with the completion of deadly and terrible trials. I ask you now, Aspirin. Are you prepared to leap into the abyss in pursuit of powered unrivaled? Uh, sure, why not? <laughs> Sold my soul to Black Mage and Roll. <laughs> Confident response. Your name, if you will? <laughs> Very well, Nicodemus. Can you say my own name? Let us mark your initiation with a trial to test the limits of your aptitude for channeling thaumaturgy. Huge hornets, star marmots, and snapping shrews inhabit this land in abundance. Exercise your sorceress might and slay three of each of these creatures before returning to my side. So there you go. Well on my way. Holy smokes. But this is this is how it begins. <laughs> this is how it all begins. Uh, of course, I, I know I said in the last episode that all of this reading, all of this, you know, constant, you know, reading, going, 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 it will all slowly pull back eventually. Uh, you just have to give it time because this is all just to get you used to, you know, playing the game. Uh, they're not going to throw you into parties right away. They're going to let you play the game solo, you know, get to know the lay of the land, get to know the stories, get to know some people. Uh, so it's like, it's for the first f five to ten levels, it's just a story drag, is all it is. And so it's a lot of reading, you know, you don't, you, I don't think you get into uh, any actual voice acting until the mission for level eight or ten, I think it is. So it's just like constantly, it's just bam, 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 over and over again. You're just constantly reading. And it does drag, it really does. But once you get up to those higher levels, uh, once you get out into the big dungeons and stuff like that, it gets it gets better. It does get a lot better. Uh, okay. So let's see what Hihito has to say. Hihito has had enough of her husband, her husband's poor worth ethic and needs someone to whip him into shape. Whip it good. How can Yashikawari demand such exorbitant contributions every single moon? It's outrageous, I tell you. Don't they understand that a woman has needs? 
How do they expect me to play to pay for rouge and sun silk dresses and feed my marmot? Oh, if only I'd had the foresight to marry a more ambitious man. This is all his fault. If he just worked harder and showed some initiative, surely he would have been rewarded, and maybe even promoted. If things don't improve, it won't be long before I join the beggars in Pearl Lane. Save me from this cruel fate, I beg of you. Speak with my husband, Bobo Nima, to find some way to motivate him. You should find him at the Coliseum entrance, wearing one of those ridiculous outfits. Alright. <laughs> My voice is already starting to go. I can already feel it. Oh, I am reading so much. Oh my gosh. This is Bobo, Bobo Nima. Bobo Nima. I am Bobo Nima. Congratulations, you found the world's worst husband. Yeah, that's what I heard. Uh, that is, if you believe that harpy I have for a wife. She never cooks. She never cleans. She just gallivants around, spending my hard-earned money. And now, and now I see she's speaking ill of me to bloody strangers. Yeah, buddy, sorry about you. Uh, well, if you're hell's bent on meddling in my affairs, you can assist me by taking some of these Franz the Fair flyers and posting them on the walls inside the Coliseum. Franz the Fair flyers. I've got a long night ahead of me standing out here, so I won't be getting in, be getting to it anytime soon. Once you finish, go and tell Walken at the Gladiators Guild. He should give you something for your trouble. Uh, key items, which are basically whenever you select something, it pulls up an item in you. It's key items. You can't get rid of them. You can't lose them. They're usually for quests, stuff like that. All right, so we're going to go in and do that. Uh... I'm probably going to pause here because what I've been doing is, uh, I think I, I know I said last episode that I was going to make, or the last, I think it was the first episode actually, I was going to turn these into like big long, hour long things. I think I'm going to cut them down into 30 minute videos. I don't know yet. We're still going. Uh, but, uh, I'm going to take a quick pause right here so I can go get something to drink so I'm not dying because I can feel my voice cracking right now. So I shall be back in five seconds. <laughs> 